mass percent. How to find the mass percent of an element within a compound, also known as percent composition. Those two uh, terms are used interchangeably. These are fairly easy to do if you understand what a percent is. What is a percent? Percents are simply a comparison, a compa comparison of two values. They compare the part to the whole. They compare some group to within the entire group, so it can compare the number of, uh, you know, Egyptians to the number of people in the world. You're a person and you're an Egyptian, so you can divide the number of Egyptians by the number of people in the world, and you have a percent, and that's a comparison. Uh, in, we will see how to do that. Here's your formula. To find the percent, you always take the mass, I'm sorry, I misspoke there, you always take the part over the whole times 100. That's how a percent works. No matter what kind of percent you're finding, that's always how you find a percent. So, we will see how to find a percent composition in a compound. See what percentage of a compound is made of a certain element. Part divided by a whole times 100. So, we'll start as an example. What is the percent of hydrogen in water? So, well, what is water? Well, we know that water is H2O. If we draw it, you'll see it looks something like that. <coughs> it has the uh, blue thing represents oxygen, and the two little red things represent hydrogen. So what percentage of this molecule is hydrogen? So we go back to our formula. Part divided by whole equals 100. So we count them up, and we might say, well, the percent is the hydrogen uh, is the part. The whole thing is the hydrogen and the water, you know, the hydrogen and the oxygen, the water all together. It's everything. And we're going to take that and take it times 100. And if we do that, we will see we get 67%. How do we get 67%? Well, how many hydrogens are there? One, two. So there's two hydrogens. How many atoms in all of the water? Well, there are three. And then you take that times 100, two divided by three times 166.7. I just rounded that off to the nearest percent in this case, which is not generally how we do it, but it gives you 67%. And that is, in fact, the percentage of hydrogen atoms in the water, uh, of all the atoms in water, but that's not what we mean. What if we count weight? What if we're counting the weight and not just the number of atoms? Well, then it becomes a little bit of a different story, because if we look at it, oxygen, look at this blue guy, he's way more heavy than the red guy. His oxygen is about 16 times heavier than hydrogen. So the mass of water clearly cannot be two-thirds hydrogen. Two-thirds, if you put this on a scale, two-thirds of the weight is not coming from the red things. It's actually most of the weight's coming from the blue thing because it's so much more massively huge than the red things. So we have to account for that. And so that way I showed you is not the right way. Here's how to do it. So let's do the math. Oxygen, uh, what does it weigh? Well, we look on the periodic table and we see that the mass is, if we go to one decimal place, is about 16.0 grams per mole and the molar mass of hydrogen is about 1.0 if you one decimal point one decimal place 1.0 grams per mole <coughs> so let's go ahead and do that math percent is in part over the whole so two hydrogens divided by the entire water molecule uh, what does that look like we're going to take up oh skipped ahead to the end so two hydrogens uh, we just said that each one was one so it's 1.0 plus 1.0 that's our part we're going to divide it by the whole, which is 1.0, 1.0, and then the oxygen we just saw in that last screen was 16.0. And so uh, that turns out to be 2.0 divided by 18.0, which is a ninth. It's 11.1 percent. Generally, I'm going to ask you, even though I didn't in that last example, I'm going to ask you to go one decimal place on all of these. So. 11.1% uh, hydrogen for water, which makes a lot more sense because hydrogen is so tiny compared to the oxygen, it should be a small percentage of the water. So what about the oxygen? Well, that turns out to be pretty easy as well. We just kind of flip it. Now our part is not hydrogen. It's still part over the whole times 100, but this time the part is not the hydrogen, it's the oxygen. And there's only one oxygen and it weighed 16.0 
the hole didn't change. It was 18.0 a minute ago, and so it's still 18.0. And so we get 8 ninths, which is 88.9%, which actually we could have gotten that another way if you think about it. There were only two things here, 100%, uh, both of them together is 100%. We just calculated that 11.1% uh, .1 of it was hydrogen, so the rest should be oxygen, which is, if you subtract those, you do get that same number that I just came up with. So you get it either way. <coughs> Sometimes it's not uh, it's not a bad idea just to do it both ways to see if you come up with the same answer both ways, especially if there's several, uh, several different uh, elements going on, and you can kind of keep track of them that way. So let's find the mass percent of each element in silver nitrate. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we need is a chemical formula. We need silver. Silver is plus one. Nitrate is minus one. So uh, our formula is AgNO3, uh, just one of each. And so we're good there. And so AgNO3, so we have different elements. We have three elements. We have silver, we have nitrogen, and we have oxygen. And we need to find the mass of each one. We do the part of the whole for each one. So, um, <coughs> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look these up on the periodic table. Silver, if I find it on the periodic table and round to one decimal place, is 107.9 grams per mole. Nitrogen is 14.0 grams per mole, and oxygen is 16.0 grams per mole. Now, I have not taken into account the fact that there are three oxygens yet. I don't really care about that yet. So, let's figure out what these parts weigh. Silver is 107.9 as we just said, nitrogen is 14.0, but oxygen is not 16.0 because there are three of them, so we've got to triple that number. Uh, so every uh, oxygen is going to get tripled, so we've got 16 times 3 is 48.0 uh, because we multiply that 16 by 3. So that's the total weight there. So if we add those up, we get a, a total weight. The whole is... 169.9, which I get just by adding those all up. And the part is, well, it depends on which thing you want to find first. If we find the silver first, it's going to be 107.9. Don't forget to take it times 100, and that's what we're going to get there. So 107.9 divided by 169.9 is 63.5%. silver. And the rest, once you've done one of them, the rest are always pretty easy because you'll find that the part, uh, the whole obviously doesn't change. The whole weight of silver nitrate is always going to be 169.9. So all I have to do now uh, to find, for example, nitrogen is just erase the part and write nitrogen's part, 14 instead. So 14.0 divided by 169.9 and I get 8.2% nitrogen. And now I'm going to do one more, but actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to subtract 100 minus 63.5 minus 8.2, and that gives me 28.3. So I, I can tell by subtracting that my oxygen percentage is going to be 28.3. So let's do that and see if that's what we in fact come up with, 28.3. So 28.3 is now our part because we're doing the oxygen, 28.3 divided by 169. Whoa, 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 what am I doing here? Mm, sorry about that. That's not the answer. The, the part isn't 28.3, the part is 48, just like we did with the others. So 48 divided by 169.9 gives us 28.3, just like I said it would. So there we go. Those are the percentages of the different elements within silver nitrate, 28.3% oxygen, 8.2% nitrogen, and 63.5% silver. But what if you don't have a formula? How would you do it if you don't have a formula? Well, it turns out that that is even easier. It, because if you don't have a formula, then it's going to have to give you the masses. They have to tell you what masses to use if it doesn't give you a formula. So those become really easy. So here would be an example. What is the mass percent of oxygen in a sample if it has 2.5 grams of barium and the entire sample has a mass of 5.5 grams. So uh, the part percent is part over the whole 
times 100. So let's go ahead and let's do that. The part for barium uh, is, uh, we want to know the mass percent of oxygen. Mass percent of oxygen, so the part is oxygen. And we don't, it doesn't tell us the oxygen, so let's keep going. Let's think about that for a second. Uh, what about the whole? Well, it says the whole thing, the entire thing has a mass of 5.5, so we do know that the bottom has a 5.5. It also gives us 2.5 grams of barium. Well, barium is a part, but it's not the part we're interested in. We're interested in the oxygen. So, what is it? Well, it becomes fairly obvious if you think about it. If the whole thing weighs 5.5 and 2.5 and of it is barium, then the difference between those two numbers is mu must be the oxygen. So we're going to, to find the oxygen, we're going to take the 5.5 minus the 2.5, which is 3.0. So our part, the oxygen part is 3.0 grams, the entire part is 5.5. We're going to divide those two things and then take it times 100, and I believe you get 54.5% when you do that, and that is correct. I hope that's what I said it was when I made this presentation. And so that is percent by mass problems.